Good morning, ABG. I would like to greet everyone. A blessed morning. Praise the Lord. Every gising is a blessing. Ano ho, ay tayo po ay uh, ginagabayan ng Diyos buhay ngayon. But before anything else, I would like to thank God for giving us another chance, another opportunity to study His Word. But first of all, I would like to thank our uh, mentor, Pastor Wilbert Buchal, Ati Hasmin, and uh, ang ating mga SCB pastors, SCB Alliance. Thank you for uh, supporting us, the Alliance of Breakthrough Generation. And of course, the ABG from uh, Manila, Taguig, uh, uh, Laguna, Quezon, uh, Pilar, Sorsogon. Uh, Naga, maging sa Katarman, at uh, Laguna, of course. Maraming maraming salamat po at uh, patuloy tayong pagpalain ng Panginoon sa araw na ito. At uh, bago tayo magpatuloy, hiniling ko muna tayo manalangin. Lord, thank you once again for giving us this wonderful opportunity, privilege to once again feast at your word. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will continue to empower us, establish us with the now word of God that we're about to partake today. I also pray that you will enlarge the capacity of our spirit, especially the young people who are listening right now, even my pastors, elders, workers. Lord God, I pray that as we feast at your word today, let your name alone be exalted, be glorified, and establish us in the Spirit, so that as we continue to govern and prevail this year, Lord, we believe that uh, we will become victorious, overcomers, more than conquerors because of your word. Salamat po na marami, Holy Spirit, from the beginning till the end of this study, speak to us in a very powerful way. Be our speaker today. Thank you. We give you praise and we give you honor. And this we pray in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the blessed people of God declare, Amen and Amen. I am so glad to report to you today na last Saturday after the message natin, marami ho ang mga nanghingi ng uh, Bible reading. Purihin ng Panginoon na mayroong mga pastor, mayroong mga uh, ABG leaders. Purihin ng Diyos. At nakatanggap din po ako ng report na na-reinforce ang kanilang uh, Bible reading na ini-implement sa kanilang church. I thank God for that. Again, let us start our uh, study with this. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out from the mouth of God. Proceeding word, the Rema word. The now word, the revelations from the Lord for the season. Napakalaga, this is the season of prevailing and governing. And along with this season is the fresh word, the now word, the rhema word from the Lord. That will enable us to flow and walk with God in the season. Mahalaga ho. Tandaan niyo po ito mga kapatid. Pag ang Diyos mayroong ginagawa sa season, Kasama dyan ang release ng kanyang grace and most especially the now word na kanyang i-re-release so that we can flow, we can walk, and we can, we can execute with Him in His season. Malinaw? Naalala ko palagi sinasabi ni Pastor Wilbert, katulad ngayon, taglamig. Okay, huwag kang magsando. If you know the season, katulad dyan, lalo sa mga, mga nasa bandang Cavite, Tagaytay, eksamin nga rito sa tagig, malamig. How much more dyan? Sa Baguio, eh, wag ka hong magsando. Yan ang ibig sabihin. You should know the season so that you will know what to do. So pag taglamig, abe, isuot mo na yung mga jacket ni Carto, yung mga ganyang style. Meron pa ba niya ngayon? So I do not know, you know. Ma, ibig sabihin, if you know the season, you will know what to do. Malinaw, eh, kung talagang sobrang init naman, mag, pag nag-summer naman, April, May, mga ganon, March, April, May, eh pag summer, eh wag ka namang nakajakit. Ano ibig sabihin? If you know the season of God, you will also know what to do. Why? Because the instruction of His Word is very clear. And if you are flowing with God, you are going with God, working with God in His season, true enough. 
the blessings for that season you will going to receive. Nagkaunawan tayo, mga kapatid. So, napakahalaga nito. Kaya nga, God is doing something in this season. First, you should know what He's doing in the season. Pangalawa, you should receive the now word for the season. And most especially, you should access the grace in the life of your pastor for the season. And if these three, three things, knowing what God is doing in the season, receiving the now word for the season, and accessing the grace in the season, hallelujah, welcome to the year of governing and prevailing. Amen. Palapakan muna natin ang Panginoon. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank God, ano? Marami ho nang hingi at uh, sa mga hindi pa ho nang hingi, abay, wag niyong sabihin na talagang kabisadong kabisado niyo na or in love na in love kayo sa litaan ng Panginoon, ano? Kung mayroon naman kayong mga sinusundan, ha? Ipagpatuloy niyo lang po yan. Ang target natin, ABG, this year, is we can read The Bible from the book of Genesis up to Revelation. Sana sa pagharap man lang natin sa Panginoon. Masasabi, kasi ang Diyos, so, pabakit ako sa inyo yung ABG, ha? makinig kayo mabuti. Ah, mayroon lang yung ilang bagay na hinahanap ang Diyos. Una, sa atin, ano? His likeness. His image and likeness. Kasi yun ang nawala, yun ang nilagay niya, yun ang nawala. Dahil sa pagsuway ng tao, hahanapin niya yun. Nung tinanggap natin ang Panginoong Jesus, He is expecting us to live like Jesus, Christ-likeness. Pangalawa, hanapin ng Diyos sa ating pagharap ang kanyang salita. The word that we've heard, every time you listen to the word, will be the same word that will be used by God to judge us. Gagamitin rin niya pang hatol sa atin. Kaya nga napakahalaga na yung salita ng Diyos, atin talaga pinag-aralan, hahanapin niya sa atin Wala siyang pakialam sa iyong mga achievements. Wala siyang pakialam sa ministry na napakalaki ang sa kanya. Yung bang salita niya, nilalakaran mo. Yung bang salita niya, minahal mo. Yung bang salita niya, minimeditate mo. Day and night. You know, you should understand what is important in the eyes of God. His likeness, His image. Because if we are living in the image and likeness of God, so what will happen? We can easily align, adjust ourselves to Him. to his weights and to his will. Pangalawa, yung kanyang salita. Why? Because whether we like it or not, the word of God is the only material that God uses for us to be refined, for us to be to be led by the Holy Spirit, for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Marami ang gusto ma-fill ng Holy Spirit, hindi naman filled ng God's word. Forget being filled with the Holy Spirit if you're not filled with the word of God. Malinaw. So kailangan kung gusto mo mapuspos ng banal na Espiritu, gusto mong makalakad sa gabay ng banal na Espiritu, you should know His Word and be filled with the Word of God just like the Lord Jesus Christ. Malinaw. Pangatlo, ahanapin niya ho yung ating mga disciples. Ano ba bunga ng buhay mo? Are you duplicating yourself? Pag sinasabing duplicating yourself, simply it simply means Christ-likeness na meron ka na i-share mo sa iba. At ito ko sa pag-share, makinig kayo sa akin mabuti mga kapatid. Hindi lamang unbeliever. Of course, unbeliever, major yan. Talagang kailangan. Uh, Kung baga, crucial yan sa kakailangan. Pero pwede ka rin mag-share sa mga kapatid na nasa mababa na dimension pa. Kasi pag nasa mababa pa silang dimension, nakakapanghinayang. Yung bang binigyan ka ng Diyos ng pagkakataon, makilala siya, pero ang dimension na yung piniling Panahanan, manahan, saan? Sa napakababang dimension. Ang ibig ko sabihin, an immature na dimension. Maraming Kristiyano, immature pa rin. And immature people, tingnan niya ako mabuti, sa Galatians 4.1, as long as an ear is a child, he is no different to a slave. Kahit siya'y tagapagmana, subalit bata, immature, you cannot trust the inheritance or entrust the inheritance to a child. Kasi pwede siyang lokuhin lang na napakabilis. That is why we have no other choice. Ang kagandahan sa Diyos, kahit na ikaw ay bata, pakit ikaw ay young people, member ng ABG, if you have the desire to become mature in your faith in God through the power of His Word, yes, sa Diyos, so, wala, hong, wala hong bata, walang matanda sa edad, sa natural. Pag ikaw ay willing at desire mo 
na ikaw ay pagpalayan at magmature sa iyong pananampalataya, God is more than willing to lead you to maturity. Remember Samuel? Sino ang kanyang pastor nung time na yun? Si Eli. Ano si Eli? Matanda na, high priest, pabaya. Hindi ginagampanan ng kanyang tungkulin. Samuel, a boy. But because Samuel has the heart for God, God spoke to him. Alina ho. Kaya wag ho niyo sabihin, bata pa ako, pastor, hindi pa pwede. Kumbaga, eh, dito muna tayo, medyo pitiks-pitiks muna. Walang ganun. Because the more na ikaw ay matured, nakaranas ka na ng maturity, Christian maturity, sa iyong murang edad. Hallelujah. As the days go by, as the years go by, you're becoming sharper, stronger. The power, the, the anointing is increasing. Nagkakaunuan po tayo. Mahalaga ito, mga kapatid. These are essential preparations to prevail and govern in God's season. Napakahalaga ho nito. So, sa mga hindi pa ho nakahingi ng uh, Bible reading, please, makikiusap na lang ako para sa'yo ha, para sa'yo. Nakahiya no? May kiusap ako para sa'yo. Kasi kung hindi mo talaga siseryosoin ang salita ng Diyos, marami ho, 30 years, 40 years, yung iba, 35 years na, 45 years, hindi pa nabasa buong Bible. Hindi ko alam kung anong mas mahalaga. Tingnan nyo nga ako mabuti. Kung mayroon mang pinakamahalaga sa buhay na ito, bilang mananampalataya, ito'y walang iba kundi ang salita ng Diyos. Now, look at me now. The Word of God is the manual of life. If you buy a uh, a vehicle or any appliance na iyong binibili, palagi mayroong manual. What's the purpose of the manual? For you to operate the appliance accurately and for you to enjoy the benefit that it can give you. Alinaw! Same thing with life. The manual of life is none other than the Word of God. Hallelujah! Mabuti pa nga. Yung iba sa atin, nakabili na, nakabili na sa sasakyan, hindi pa nabasa manual. Hmm. Kaya tapos, pag mayroong problema, magtatanong, paano ba ito gagawin? It's all in the manual. Open the manual, and then you will see what, how to do it. Why? Because everything about the vehicle is written in the manual. Look at me now. Everything about your life is in the Word of God. That is why the devil doesn't want you to read the Word of God. Mas gusto mag-mobile legend ka, mag magmanood ka na kung ano-ano, mag-Facebook ka maghapon. Bakit? Basta wag mo lang matuklasan yung manual ng buhay. Bakit? Because the moment you discover the Word of God, what will bring you? What it will bring you? It will bring you to the truth. It will bring you closer to God and away from the devil. The devil doesn't want this. That doesn't want that thing to happen. Malinaw. So ano kailangan mong gawin? Medyo tabing iba buhay mo? Medyo baluktot ba? Medyo hindi ka ba talaga? Ikaw nakakilala sa sarili. You know yourself. So if you know yourself, anong gagawin mo? Uh, alam mo mayroon kang inaccuracies. Alam mo na mayroon kang bad habits, sinful habits. Pa, paano gagawin? Refer to the manual of life. Nagkakanawaan tayo. Bakit may mga mekaniko? Sino ang pinakamekaniko? Halimbawa, sa sakyan, titignan yung manual, ito yung tama. May mekaniko magayos. Ang pinakamekaniko sa buhay mo ay walang iba kundi pastor mo. At ang gagamitin niya sa pag-repair sa iyo, yung manual of life. Ngayon, kung ikaw ay palagi nagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos, nagiging madali. Minsan, yung mekaniko hindi available. Kaya mo nang i-repair ang sarili mong sasakyan. Bakit? Kasi nagbabasa ka ng manual. Same thing in the, in, in the case of our lives. Sometimes, hindi available ang pastor. But because you are immersed in the Word of God, you know the manual of life. You know how to, how to uh, fix yourself para ikaw ay hindi na liability sa church, kundi ikaw ay asset. Maraming mga kristyano, liabilities sa loob ng church. Bakit? Kasi hindi filled ng Word of God. But if you are filled with the Word of God, you always immerse yourself in the Word. You live your life according to the Word. What will happen? You will be an asset, not a liability inside the church. Malinaw. And if you are filled with the Word of God, basahin ka. Kita mo, kinakabisa ni Pastor Wilson. Dapat kabisado nyo rin. Joshua 1.8 Do not let this book of the law depart from your lips. Seven translation, depart from your mouth. Meditate on it 
day and night so that you will be able to do everything written in it. And your life will become successful and prosperous. Or prosperous and successful. Mga kabataan, makinig kayo sa akin. Breakthrough, ABG, Alliance of Breakthrough Generation. Remember this. True, genuine, original success and prosperity is always connected to the Word of God. A success and prosperity, a byproduct, a, 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 the success and prosperity that is a byproduct of God's work is a long live and lasting prosperity and success. Success and prosperity without the influence of God's word, short-lived success and prosperity. Para lang yung mga nananalo sa mga pasugal, nanalo na malaki, taon or buwan lang ang binilang, ubus agad. Bakit? Hindi naman kasi galing sa Diyos. But the success and prosperity, which is a byproduct, a result of immersing yourself in the word, it is long-lasting. It is a, a kind of prosperity or blessings came from God without stress, without distress, without uh, anxieties. Nagkakanawan tayo, mga kapatid. And the more you walk according to His word, the more that you align your life according to His ways, according to His will, and if you're living according to God's will, hallelujah. Blessing upon blessing, breakthrough upon breakthrough. You can break through limitations. You 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 can you can become you become a blessing to others. Nagiging makabuluhan ng buhay. Eh. Kailan naging makabuluhan ng buhay? Pag ikaw ay babad na palagi salita ng Diyos. I encourage you today. I encourage you this year. From Genesis to Revelation. Join us. Ang ngayon, kung mayroon kayo nabasa, hindi nyo maintindihan, at medyo naguguluhan kayo, that's the time you ask your pastor. Ngayon, kung si pastor eh, hindi available kasi busy, pwede naman tayo magtanong din sa ah, mga pang pastor natin na tuturo sa ABG. Sa mga nasa ACB, basta within the alliance lang. Pero first, wag mong i-bypass ang pastor mo. Siya mo tanongin, pastor, nabasa ko ito. Ano ba ito sabihin nito? And then you tanong, ano nangyayari? You, you now become curious sa mga bagay na makabuluhan, hindi sa mga walang kakwenta-kwenta. Nagkakanoan ba tayo, mga kapatid? Okay, so, pangalawa, you should implement, if you want to govern and prevail this year, you should implement spiritual discipline. Kailangan tapusin mo talaga kasi yan apat na chapters. Apat na chapters isang araw. Kung tatlo man, mahahaba. So kailangan meron kang spiritual discipline. Na pag nabasa mo to, kahit mayroon kang gagawin, kaya nga this time, iyan mo. Kung baga schedule mo yung gagawin mo. Bakit? When you read the Word of God, it, it should be finished. Nagkakanawan tayo. Yung iba sa inyo, pag nakabasa isang nakadalawang chapter na, medyo parang napesting manok na. Okay, nanonoka na. Eh, makakaproblema ka niyan. Eh, papatulogin ka ng demonyo. Ang mahirap pa niyan, nakatulog ka, walang pumasok sa utak mo. At sasabihin mo, nakapagbasa kang dalawang chapter. No, 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 no. The moment you read the Word of God, tingnan niya mabuti. Ano ang meditation? Papakunawa ko sa inyo, mga kapatid. When you read the Word of God, don't just read it for the sake of reading. As you read the Word of God, you ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, speak. Your servant is listening. Speak to me, O God. Let your word minister to me. And as you read the word of God, you're meditating on it. Minsan ganito yan. Tuturuan ko yan. Pag nagbasa ka, biglang mag mayroong mag-strike na verse sa'yo. Tigil. Huwag mo tuloy. Tigil ka doon. Then meditate the word. Because every time you have need, especially in the spiritual aspect, ang pinakagamot sa spiritual na sakit o spiritual na problema sa litaan ng Diyos. Wala nang iba. Hindi katulad sa gamot sa sakit sa ulo. Ang dami. Mayroong may decol, mayroong biogesic, mayroong Advil. I use it in the stage. Mga, mga ganun-ganun eh. Sa Bible, isa lang. Katik. Well, salita ng Diyos. Kaya hindi ka na mahirapan. Hindi siya generic, original. Nagkakanawan tayo. Pagka mayroong kang problema spiritual. Simple habits. Hindi mo matagumpayan. Salita ng Diyos. Ayan, kapatid. Mayroong kang karamdaman. Nagpagamot ka na. Wala pa rin. Salita ng Diyos. Sagot niyang kapatid, ano pa? Sige, tell me. Meron, meron kang ano, meron kang fear, natatakot ka pagka madilim mo ganito. Sabit na na Diyos. 
thing that concerns about the spiritual matters. Oh, there is only one medicine. There is only one cure. And that is none other than the Word of God. That is why from the Genesis to Revelation, ikapisa natin. Let us be a lover of God and a lover of His Word. Because you can never be a lover of God if you are not a lover of His Word. But no. Just allow me to expose this truth to you. Why? Because the moment that you expose yourself, every time you read the Word of God, you expose yourself to the Word. Andito po ako, Panginoon. Sige ho. Correct me, teach me, rebuke me, correct me, train me, O God. And if that's your attitude, every time you face the Word of God, then get ready. Because the Word of God will minister to you. The Holy Spirit will quicken the Word that is being deposited in your life. That's the beginning of your power. That's the beginning of your anointing. That's the beginning of your effectivity. That's the beginning of being efficient in your ministry in the Lord. You know, become a an asset, not a liability. Pagkasabi sa katabi mo, I am an asset in the world, in the vineyard of God, not a liability. Napakalaga niya. Ang iba, uh, I, 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 am, I am addressing this to the worship ministry. Because some of you na nakapasok dyan sa worship team or tinawag yung worship ministry, whatever it is, ang nagigig entry point mo dyan ay yung iyong uh, gift. Tama? Marunong mag pinasok sa worship ministry. Marunong kumanta, pinasok sa worship ministry. Eh, maybe that's your entry point. But remember, in ministering to God, before God, and to the pe- before the people, you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because whether you like it or not, you can perform. Performing and worshiping is two different things. Because if you are just performing, you are just touching the, you are just touching the, the ano eh, kung baga yung, uh, yung ibabaw lang, emotions lang. Kaya papansin mo sabi nila, I'm so blessed. Pwede naman ma-bless ka. Ang tanong si Lord, na-bless. Because the standard of God is not just the surface, but is more than concern. His, his, his concern is the spirit. Paano mo matas siyang spirit? Sumpatanayan ko sa'yo. In John chapter 6, sabi ng Panginoon, the word that I have spoken to you is spirit. Life and spirit. That is why if you're a member in the worship ministry, you need to be filled with God's word. Alam niya ni Pastor Jojo, mas mainam pa na kukunin namin na mag ng worship ministry, papasok sa worship ministry, yung malita kaysa babad sa gitara niya. Ay, marami babad sa gitara. May mag-gitara, pero bok, pagdating ka sa liturgy. The moment they minister, they are just touching the emotions, but they are not reaching the spirit. And the most important thing before God is the spirit. Why? Because God is a spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. How can you worship God in spirit and in truth? By the power of His Word. Because the moment the Word, what is the Word? The word of God, the word that I have spoken to you is life and spirit. The moment you immerse yourself in the word, you are increasing the water level of your spirit. You are increasing the, the, the anointing in the spirit. So the moment you minister, Minsan, di ba, sinasabi ni Pastor Jojo, wala na lang tugtog. Kasi maraming worship ministry, hindi makapag-worship sa Lord kung walang tugtog. Eh, paano si Jesus? Wala naman silang eh, mga instrumento. But why is it that they were able to worship God and si Lord talagang sumagot sa kanilang pagsamba? Nabibless sila. Nabibuild sila. Nakita niyo ngayon yung difference? Saan babagsak lahat itong pastor? Babagsak pa rin sa salita ng Diyos. Kaya, hoy, nananawagan ako sa mga hindi pa nag-PM sa akin. Ano? Ako na lang ang mag ano, Nakahiya naman sa'yo eh. Ako na lang ang mag, ano, makiusap sa'yo. Bakit? Para na lang sa'yo, Brad. Sis, para sa'yo. Ako mo? Alam nyo, sa sobrang tigas na ng ulo rin, ng marami, hindi na obra yung minsahe na pahimas-himas. Minsan ho, makinig kayo sa'yo mabuti. 
Hindi figure of speech lang po ito ha. Minsan hindi na obra yung himas. Kasi minsan kahit anong himas mo, sa tulog, sa nagtutulog-tulugan, alam mo pinakamahirap gisingin? Yung tulog, madaling magising eh. Pag ginising mo, mabilis eh. Pero yung nagtutulog-tulugan, yung alam na tapos nagkukunwa-kunwari ang tulog, mahirap magising-gisingin ng nag, nagtutulog-tulugan. Kaya minsan hindi na kailangan, hindi na ubra yung himas, hampas. And this message today is just like a hampas to your soul, to your spirit. Para maunawaan nyo ito. Ang clear naman na message, eh, gusto niya Englishin ko pa. Those who wants to uh, have, uh, who wants to read the whole Bible, From Genesis to Revelations, I have a monthly schedules in order for you to finish reading the Bible from the book of Genesis to Revelations. Siguro naman nag-gets yun na. Kasi tinagalog ko noong nakaraan, mukhang wala nakag-gets. Iilan lang. At ako na niwala sa dami ng, dami ng na-reach, eh parang iilan lang yun ang hingi. So ibig sabihin, lahat ng hindi ng hingi, nabasa na yung buong Bible. Congratulations. At yung mga nanghingi, huwag kayo ma-discourage. Matatapos din natin yan. Okay? Pero kung alam mo namang hindi mo nabasa, alam mo naman na pinaliwanag ko sa'yo ngayon that the Bible is the manual of life. If you want to everything about, if you want to live a, 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 a healthy life, if you want to live a victorious life, if you want to live a life that is pleasing before God, then immersed, soak, Yourself in the Word of God. Give time. It, make it a priority. Treat it with high urgency that I need to read the whole Bible from the book of Revelation, from the book of uh, Genesis to Revelation. Kailangan bakit? This is the manual of life. This is God's love letter for me. Hindi ko alam, ano? Pero iba sa atin, talaga mahusay. May mga ano pa tayo eh. Ay, si, uh, uso pa ba ngayon yung mga Korean? Korean? Buhay pa rin? Okay, tamang galing namang iba sa inyo, no? Yung Korean, ano? Ano yan? K-pop? Uh, K-drama? Talagang sumisiris pa eh. Pahiya ka sarili mo. Ano? Tapos wala? Bokya ka salita ng Diyos? Kapal na mukhang tawag dyan, kapatid. Kasi yung ginamit mong lakas, ginamit mong mata, Ginamit mong oras para panoorin itong mga hindi mo nga maintindihan ng mga salita. I'm not, I have nothing against this K-pop. Ano? Sino ba itong mga to? Hindi ko sila kilala. Pero ang punto ko rito, yung nagbigay ng mata mo, yung nagbigay ng oras mo, yung nagbigay ng hininga mo, yun ang hindi mo pinaparangalan. Isang araw mananagot ka dyan. Hindi kita tinatakot. Sinasabi ko lang ang totoo sa'yo para mauntog ka sa katotohanan. Nagkakaunawan tayo. I'm not saying that's bad thing. But if it is influencing you and taking you away from the Lord, away from the Word of God, I think it's from the devil. Because anything that takes you away or leads you away from God, it's from the devil. They are not the devil, but if they are the source para ikaw'y mapalayo sa salita ng Diyos, hindi ka na makabasa ng salita ng Diyos. At pag ikaw'y humaharap sa salita ng Diyos, nagmamadali ka magbasa pa, para manood ka ulit, something's wrong. Ang tawag dyan, huwag kang ma-offend, Diyos Diyosan. Because anything that will, that will steal or anything that will get your attention away from God, you are putting another God, small g, before the big God, capital G. Para ano, tinatapat mo sa kanya at pinapalabas mo pa sa harapan niya na mas importante yun kaysa salita niya. Mga talkat, manginig ka sa iyong kinaupuan ngayon. Again, the message is no longer himas, it is now hampas. Kasi minsan ito yung kailangan ng marami. Malinaw mga kapatid. So the word of God must be our priority. Just a simple, a top priority. We should treat the Word of God or reading God's Word with higher. Again, I'm showing you the, the moment you read God's Word, read it, uh, read it with a with a humble heart, and then be expose yourself, Lord. And dito pa ako nag nagaaral ako na yung mga salita, mangusap po kaysa akin. You always ask the Holy Spirit. Buhay ho ang Dios. At pag siya kinausap po, ikaw ay humihingi ng gabay sa kanya. Mangusap sa tiyak sa yon kapatid. Tiyak ko mangusap sa sayo. And if that's the case, what will going to happen? 
every every reading of God's word is now it is now an exciting thing. Bakit? Because the moment you speak to God, God speaks to speaks back to you. Ano nangyayari? It is no longer a monologue. This time it's a dialogue. You, you speak to the Lord, you pray to the Lord, and the Lord spoke to you or speaks to you through His Word. I go. Rating ang panahon. When you ask the Holy Spirit, He will He will answer to you directly. Eh bakit naririnig ni Dr. Jonathan David? Bakit naririnig ni Pastor Wilbert? Bakit na sabi nilang impression sa akin to ng Diyos? Why? Because they're too much exposed with the Word. Tingnan mo mga manual ni Pastor Wilbert. Tingnan mo ang mga libro ni Dr. Jonathan David. Punong-puno ng salita ng Diyos. And then magdi-dream ka, one day I will become like them. If you are not immersed in the Word of God, forget it. Nagpapantasya ka lang. Nahibang ka. Patawarin niya ako sa mga termino na ginagamit ko, pero ito yung nararapat sa panahon ngayon. Kasi isang malaking kahibangan at pantasya na ibig mong marating ang narating ng ating mga mentor, ang, ang father ng ating mentor, kung mangarap ka, napakataas. Pero ang kilos mo naman para matupad ang pangarap mo, yun, napaka baba. It is not proportionate. But if you want to be like them, then double the work. If you want to be like them, then immerse yourself in the word. If you want to be like them, then stack in everything that they do para no, para mayroon kang pattern. Nagkaunawa na yun. Eh bakit pasun ang nagawa nila ito? Every man of God na ginagamit ng Diyos na malakasan sa kanyang ubasan, they, they pay the price. There is always a price to pay. If you want to become, if you want to prevail and govern in this in this year, it is not an automatic thing. Na magiging magkaroon ka ng grace to govern in a pack without paying the price? No, 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 no. Pastor Wilbert paid the price. Kung alam nyo lang si Pastor Wilbert na magsimula, nagkukumyot siya. Dala-dala niya, minsahin ng Diyos, nagkukumute lang siya. Mayroon pa siyang kinakwento. Libre sila ng hotel, magsiseminar sila. Mamahaling hotel, five-star hotel sa Cebu. Pero ang laman ng bulsa niya, limang piso. Kaya sabi niya, kwento niya sa amin, kaya nung mag-toothbrush ako, hindi ako gumamit ng baso. Bakit? Kasi pag ginamit ko yung baso, baka mabasag ko, limang piso lang ang pera ko, paano ko ito babayaran? Kamay lang ang ginagamit niya. See? These are the price that he paid for what he is achieving right now. Dr. Jonathan David arrived in Moar. Ang sabi niya, ang dala niya, isang plastic lang. Hindi baga, plastic ng damit at saka isang bisikleta. But look at the man now. Both of these great men of God paid the price. What about us? Bible reading pa lang to. Sablay ka na. Ano sasabihin mo? You want to become great? My goodness. God have mercy on us. Malinaw ho, mga kabataan. Malinaw ba, mga kapatid? Hindi lang mga kabataan. Lahat na nakikinig ngayon. Malinaw ba ito sa atin? Let us give a, 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 a priority and high urgency. Pagdating sa salita ng Diyos. O hindi ka pang humabol. January pa lang. Maganda magsimula. O dumahaba-haba na yun. But again, kayang humabol. At pag nasanay na tayo sa salita ng Diyos, kami round two na ho. For the glory of God, ha? baba pa nga yan, eh. tatagal na namin, round two pa lang. But again, at least nagkaroon ng sistema. At least nagkaroon ng pagkakataon. Kaya pa nagpipreach si Pastor Wilbert, kung sino mga mga pastor sa ICB nagpipreach, makakarelate ka kagad. Oop, dito to kinuha. Nasa Genesis 2. Meron po isang pastor, si Pastor Romy Valenzuela. Pag nagpo-post siya, natutuwa ko. Bakit? Mukhang nagbabasa rin pastor si Pastor Romy mula sa Genesis. Kasi parang yung mga pinopost siya sa Genesis, nabasa ko na. Sana po ay. Hindi ka pwede. Again ha, tanda mo ito mga kapatid. The last weapon na gagamitin ng demonyo before the Lord Jesus Christ returns is deception. And deception Pag sinasabing deception, almost the same, just like the original. 
Ano ang ibig sabihin? Ang gagamitin din ng mga false prophet and false teachers is none other than the word of God. At lagi niyong tandaan, ang sabi ng Painong, pwede silang tumawag ng apoy mula sa langit at bababa at maging the very elect ay pwedeng madeceive nila. That is why, habang hindi pa dumating yung twin, Matthew 24 na yan na sinasab yung deception, great deception before the Lord Jesus Christ returns, ano gagawin natin? Unahan na natin. Because the moment na ibabad natin ang ating mga sarili sa salita ng Diyos, anong mangyayari? May expose tayo sa truth, maging accustomed tayo sa truth. Anong kasunod? Kahit na anong deception na sabi ng demonyo, tatalbog na lang sa atin. Bakit? Eh, immersed na tayo, na marinate tayo sa, sa katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya kahit anong pandaraya ng demonyo, hindi na uubra. Pero doon sa mga wardi-warde, doon sa mga hindi nagpapahalaga ng salita ng Diyos, they, you will be the first casualty. The deception, the spirit of deception na darating. Alam niyo mga kapatid, wala, walang pakilaman demonyo kung kristyano. Ano ngayon? Marami naman nagsasabing kristyano. Madaling sabihin, kristyano ako. Di ba? Bilis lang. Pero walang pakilaman Diyos dyan. Ano ngayon kung kristyano ka? Wala ka naman salita ng Diyos. Ano ngayon kung may Bible ka? Di mo naman binang... Ano ngayon kung pinabasa mo? Di mo naman pinamumuhay. Nakita niyo, napakarami pang steps sa dapat gawin. Pero sa reading muna tayo, hindi pa natin ma-perfect. Paano na sa meditation? Paano na sa application? Paano na sa execution? There's a lot of things that we need to do. But what we are doing, this rubbish, garbage, things in the world, totoo habang nasa mundo tayo, mayroon tayo mga kailangan tapusin sa mundo, magtrabaho tayo sa mundo, pero higit dyan on of that, the Word of God. Priority. This message is not just for the ABG, but for all believers, even the people in the government. Titino ang gobyerno pag mayroong salita ng Diyos. Ngayon, kung magkataon, ikaw ay lingkod ng Diyos at babad ka salita ng Diyos, may mga pagkakataon, makita mo yung boss mo na nahihirapan dahil sa problema. Dahil wala nga salita ng Diyos, ikaw ngayon ang gagamitin na magbigay sa kanya ng salita ng Diyos. Ano mangyayari? You are not touching, ministering to higher places. But how can you minister kung ikaw mismo wala kang salita ng Diyos? Pambihira. Naku ha? At dahil wala ka ng ministry, ano nangyayari na natutuwa ka na lang sa isang klaseng pananampalataya na walang kakwenta-kwenta. Payag ka ba? Kristyanong walang naiak sa gawain ng Diyos. Napakapangit, di ba? Hindi maganda pakinggan. Christian nga, wala namang kontribusyon sa halip na magiging asset, naging liability. Kristyanong liability. Ay, naku kapatid, nakakahiya. Pagkasabi sa katabi mo, nakakahiya. Pero if you're an asset, you're always top of mind ng pastor mo, tama? Ay, alam mo yung mga asset sa church? Top of mind ng pastor yan. Ano ba gagawin? Tawagin mo na si Joshua. Si Joshua nang gagawa niya. Ano yung gagawin? Si Kenneth. Bigay mo na kay Kenneth yan. Top of mind eh. Pero yung mga hindi maasahan, kaya mo na. Pastor, libre siya ano? Huwag na. Kasi pag yan ang pagagawin mo, imbis na tapusin isang araw, isang linggo tinatapos niyan. Ay, ability. I hope today, you are not a liability, but you're an asset to your pastor, to your church, especially to God. Alinaw? Hallelujah. Tuloy natin. Last Saturday, we have... Uh, Discuss about the process of partnership in destiny, about God. So again, this this came, this teaching is came from Dr. Jonathan David, at uh, atin lam ini expound rapo sa konteksto naman sa atin dito sa Pilipinas. So number one, God formed man out of the dust of the earth. Okay, Genesis two seven and sabi a then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground. In the year of prevailing and governing, the first thing na dapat nating makatch is the word forming. Before the Lord, ang sabi ng Lord sa Genesis 1.26, let us create man in our image and likeness. Nag-agree sila. Pero, kailangan ng lagayan ng container, ng image and likeness of God. So, kailangan niyang gumawa ng tao out of the dust. Malinaw? 
So the revelation behind this is God, first things first, we need to be formed by God so that He can place His image and likeness in us. He can place the best plans and purposes that He had for us. Lagi natin tandaan, Jeremiah 29.11, Kabisado natin lahat, for I know the plans I have for you, plans are to harm you, but plans to give you hope and a future. Gusto ng Diyos ilagay yan. Pero again, it is not an automatic thing. Hindi yung mangyayari. Unless you will allow God to form you. Then how God form us? Through sharp and strong messages. Just like today. Inspirational messages are good. But it cannot build your spirit. It will only encourage or establish your emotions. If explain ko sa inyo mabuti. Inspirational, inspirational messages will only establish your emotion. But sharp and strong messages, accurate messages, will build your spirit to become strong and established so that times of trials in times of storms, it will become your anchor that no matter how strong the storm is after the storm, you will still found. You will still be found standing. Malinaw. So kailangan maporma tayo. Anong paraan ng Diyos magporma? Salita niya. At anong klaseng salita? Strong and sharp messages. Nakakasugat at napakalakas na kayang wasakin, durugin ang mga bagay sa buhay natin na hindi kinalulugdan ng Diyos. Kasi kung walang container, walang maporma ang Diyos, at hindi maporma ang ating karakter, hindi maporma ang ating buhay na magiging fit. Bakit tayo pinuporma? Para maging fit doon sa kanyang mahalaga at magandang plano at layunin sa buhay mo. Pag hindi ka, hindi ka makipag-cooperate at hindi mo hayaan ang Diyos na ikaw ay pormahin. God will not, God is a gentle God. Ito maganda sa Diyos, is a gentle God. And He will not force Himself to you. Kung nakarinig ka na ng strong message, nakarinig ka ng sharp message, and then you choose not to respond, then it's your loss. But if you listen to the sharp message, you listen to the rebuke, to the correction, to the training, to the teaching of God, what will happen? You will readjust your feet, you will readjust your mind, you will readjust your heart, you will readjust your spirit. Malinaw. And in readjusting and realigning your spirit, you are simply allowing His powerful word and powerful hand to form your life in order for you to become a vessel of honor where God is able to place His wonderful plans and purposes over your life. Malinaw. Pangalawa, God breathed into His nostrils the breath of life. Genesis 2.7, and sabi, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Always remember, mga kapatid, life is God and life is in God and God is life. It is not Money, it is not the material things, it is not the world. Mayroong bagong kaso dyan sa, di ba? Public knowledge na. Young people, 20 plus lang. Dinidinig ang kaso ngayon. It is a very thing. Marami pa sana yung babae na yun, yung kabataan na yun na marating sa buhay niya. He has the brain, he has the beauty. And I want you to understand, sa palagay niyo, mga kabataan, mga tagapanood ngayong umaga, kung yung kabataan na yun ay puspus ng salita ng Diyos, naiyak. kung siya ay puspus ng salita ng Diyos, sa palagay niyo, mangyari sa kanya yun? Never. But because there is no word of God governing, leading, guiding that young people, what happened? Nasira ang buhay sa walang kakwenta-kwentang pamamaraan. He 
Hindi ba't napakasayang? Life is too precious, paid by God in the cross of Calvary. And then makukuha lang ng kamatayan sa ganong kawalang kakwenta-kwenta paraan. The question is, why that thing happened? Because the Word of God is not present in her life. Kasi ako'y naniniwala kung ang salita ng Diyos ay naroon sa buhay ng kabataan na yun, hindi siya mapapahamak. Because the Word of God will keep you away from any harm. Because the Word of God will give you wisdom what to do, how to do the right thing. That is why I'm pleading you. I beseech you in the name of Jesus. Young people, please, let's do it right this time. Let us prioritize the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to minister to you powerfully. Expose yourself. Pag sinasabi kong expose yourself, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister. Allow the Holy Spirit to cut off your sinful habits. all bad habits so that the Lord can use you and make you a vessel of honor, not a vessel of dishonor. Nagkaunawan tayo. Life is in God and God is life. So life without God and His Word is useless. Sabi ng Panginoon, di ba? Anong pakinabang ng tao kung mapasa kanyang buong mundo? Kaya manan na buong mundo, mapahamak naman kanyang kaluluwa. Your life, your soul, is worth more than the riches of the world. Ganong kakahalaga sa Diyos. Kaya yung kabataan na yun, ganong kahalaga sa Diyos yun. Nakakapanghinayang. That is why kami, nila Pastor Wilbert, at ang mga kapasturan sa ACB, punong-puno ng passion na i-share sa inyo ang salita ng Diyos. Para ano? Para kayong mga next generation ay hindi na ma, 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 hindi kayo madaya ng kalaban because the, the last the last the last uh, uh, strategy of the enemy, the last weapon of the enemy before the Lord Jesus Christ returns is the spirit of deception. When you speak about deception, he will also use the word of God. But for people, for believers who are exposed and immersed in the Word of God, they can never be deceived. Why? Because they hold the truth. And when lies comes, lagi yung tanda, pag nagtapat na ang lies at truth, the truth always prevails. Amen and amen. Pangatlo, man became a living soul. Genesis 2.7b, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust on the, of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living soul mga kapatid ko kay Kristo kung hindi ng Diyos hininga ang buhay sa tao wala siya hindi siya magiging buhay na nila lang ano lang ibig sabihin clear as crystal the reason why we exist or the reason of our existence is none other than God you remove God in your life, then you are giving a sentence of death in you. Malinaw? Remove life and death will take over. Hindi ka physically namamatay, pero feeling mo parang walang kwenta, patay. Yan ang nangyayari sa marami. That is why you cannot discount, you cannot remove God, you cannot remove the word of God in your life. Ang mga taong walang salita ng Diyos, ang mga taong walang Diyos sa buhay, parang sinumpa na mga buhay niyan. I came from, uh, I, I worked in a multinational company. I have a lot of friends na talaga mga mayayaman. Minsan sinama ako ng boss ko doon sa kanyang kondo dyan sa BGC. Magkaroon ka ng kondo sa BGC, aba. Napakalaking, napakayaman mo. No? Alam niyo pagdating doon, wala siyang magawa. kundi mag-playstation. Awang-awa ako. Bakit? Ang hirap na hirap siya doon sa trabaho. Tapos pag-uwi mag-playstation, ang sabi ko, sayang ko nagbasa na ito ng salita ng Diyos, may matututunan pa ito. There are rich people who are poor in the spirit. And there are also poor people who are rich in the spirit. But what I'm trying to say, 
Whether you are poor or rich, you need the word of God. Malinaw. What makes God became, uh, what makes man became a living soul or a living being? God. The life of God. What is the life of God? The word that I've spoken to you is life and spirit. It will give you life. Number four, God placed him in the garden. Ito maganda. Genesis 2.8 Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. Naunawaan. Once na hinayaan mo ang Diyos sa pormahin ka, anong gagamitin siya pagporma sa'yo? Sharp messages, strong messages, so that you will become a vessel of honor. Anong gagawin niya? God will be, is the one preparing your destiny. Ang destiny ni Adan at ni Eva, yung Garden of Eden, ang Diyos ang naglagay niyan. Yung destiny mo si Lord ang nag-prepare. At ilalagay ka lang ng Diyos din na maglalagay sa iyo sa destiny mo sa oras na hayaan mo ang sharp and strong messages na pormahin ka. Anong sabi? And there he put the man he had formed. Nung maporma ang tao, Diyos ang nagdala. Kapatid, tuming ka sa akin, wag kang pumigil. Pag ang Diyos ay hinayaan mong pormahin ka ng mga strong and sharp messages at ikaw ay nag-cooperate at ikaw ay nag-adjust at sumunod sa mga narinig mong mga salita ng Diyos, ang Diyos mismo ang magdadala sa iyo at maglalagay sa iyo sa tamang lugar. At lagi mong tandaan, if God is the one bringing you to the right place, the right place is the place where uh, where the one preparing is God and if God takes you to the right place it is the place where blessings are within reach pansinin mo sila si Adan tsaka si Eva abot kamay pitas lang ng pitas kanon sa right place so if you are experiencing that blessings ay masyadong mailap sa iyo baka wala ka sa tamang tamang lugar or baka hindi ka pa naporma ng Diyos kaya hindi ka makarating sa tamang lugar ulitin kong basa Genesis 2.8 Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden and there He put the man He had formed. Kailan ka ng Diyos dadalhin sa tamang lugar? Kung ikaw ay naporma niya na. At ano ang, mara- ang ma- ma- maranasan mo sa tamang lugar? Abot kamay na biyaya. Panglima, God released all provision for men in the right place. All the provision that is needed All the provision that you need, God had already provided. Tingnan niyo ako mabuti. Who prepared the Garden of Eden? God. Anong ginawa ng God kay Adam at kay Eve? Form. Nung ma-form sila, anong ginawa? Siya mismo ang nagdala. Kinuha sila at inilagay. Catch the revelation. Maaring matagal ka ng pagod sa buhay. Matagal ka nang naghanap. Ano kaya ang magiging kahinatan? Ano kaya ang magiging kinabukasan ko? Ito na ang sagot. Hayaan mo ang Diyos na pormahin ang spirito mo, pormahin ang ugali mo, pormahin ang buhay mo, tanggalin yung mga dapat tanggalin sa buhay mo at inspirational ko, the sharp and strong messages so that you will become a vessel of honor, a carrier of God's grace. Pag nakita na Diyos sa pormado ka na at tamang-tama na sa kanyang plano sa iyo, siya na mismo ang gagawa ng paraan para madala ka niya papunta doon sa tamang lugar. At sa tamang lugar, abot ang biyaya. At sa tamang lugar, lahat ng kailangan mo, naroon na. Kaya hindi pala dapat ang kristyano palaging kapos. Dapat ang kristyano palaging lubos ang pagpapala at ligaya. Pang-anim, God gave man instruction on how to meet his own needs. Pagdating niya doon sa tamang lugar, he gave man instructions on how to meet his own needs. Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work, to work it and take care of it. Tingnan niya mabuti, pagdating doon, binigyan ng Diyos ang instruction ng tao. Na ano? Pangalagaan ang kanyang nilikha at i-cultivate. Sa ibang translation, to work it and to it. To take care of it. Anong ibig sabihin? Lagi mong tandaan kapatid, walang nilikha ang Diyos na talunan. Kaya sabi sa katabi mo, walang nilikha ang Diyos sa talunan. Lahat ng nilikha, tingin ka sa akin, lahat ng nilikha ng Diyos, 
ay mayroon siyang paggagamitan. Maaring tayo lang ang nagsabi, yung mayroon mga kapansanan, imperfect sila. Ikaw lang may sabi niyan. Pero bakit nandiyo sinayaan na ganyan yan, mayroon siyang paggagamitan? Huwag na tayong lumayo, yung ating mahal na mentor na lang, si Pastor Wilbert. Sabi niya, kung hindi siguro natanggal yung kabilang kamay ko, wala ako sa Diyos na yun. See? Alam ng Diyos yung kanyang ginagawa. Pero isa ang malinaw. Walang ginawa ang Diyos o nilika ang Diyos na wala siyang paggagamitan. Hindi ka ng Diyos inalaw na makatawid sa 2021. Di natin alam mo. Noong March 2020, kung makatawid pa sa 2021, bakit? Our enemies and sin. But the fact na ikaw ay hinayaan ng Diyos na makatawid sa 2021, mayroon siyang layunin sa iyo, kapatid. Baganda. So that the Lord had given us instruction. Now look at now. Kasama ng pagkalika sa atin ng Diyos. Ako naniniwala, hindi talaga si Lord nagkamali sa sinasabi niya sa John chapter 10, verse 10. The, the, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the devil. But I came that he may have life and leave it to the fools, I bad translation, and leave it abundantly. This Lord nagkamali rin. Yun ang plano ng Diyos. We will live a life sa Tagalog, mas maganda ako'y naparito para bigyan sila ng buhay na ganap, perfect, at kasiyasiya. Hindi si Lord nagkamali. Yun ang plano niya, yun ang gusto niyang gawin, but He needs to give you an instruction. Ano? You need to... Ano ikaw mo? Nung time ni Adal Lupa, ngayon ano cultivate mo? Potentials. Ano ikaw cultivate ko, Pastor? Abilities. Ano ikaw cultivate ko, Pastor? Giftings. Your potentials, abilities, and giftings, nakadeposito yan sa'yo. Nandyan yan sa loob mo. Bakit? Kasi yan ang magiging paraan at yan ang magiging, uh, magiging weapon mo at yan ang magiging dahilan para ikaw ay makapag-accumulate ng wealth. For God had given you the ability to accumulate wealth. Now, yung iyong, yung iyong abilities, yung iyong potentials, yung iyong giftings, mayroon din ang iba. Kaya pag nakita mo yung iba, na ano ka, kumbaga na-intimidate ka, bakit mas mahusay siya sa akin, Pastor? Nagkataon lang na na-harness niya na. Nagkataon lang na na-develop niya na. Pero gusto kong maintindihan mo, God created as unique. Ulitin ko, God created as unique. That is why yung thumb mark natin, Ikaw lang ang meron yan. Bakit? Gusto ng Diyos makatch mo ang revelation ngayong umaga. God created you unique. Kahit lahat kayo marunong magluto, pero mayroon kang ibang touch. Bakit? Kasi unique ka. Yung pagluluto mo, kahit puro adobo niluluto, mayroong ibang lasa, mayroong kang ibang touch niyan. Bakit? Kasi ang bawat isa unique. Malinaw. Kung mayroong nagagawa yung kaibigan mo, masarap na at mahusay siya, pero wag kang magpa-intimidate kasi iba siya, iba ka. Malinaw. Kaya walang comparison ng sarili sa iba. Bakit? We were created by God unique. And all the abilities, potentials, and giftings ay dineposito na sa'yo para maranasan mo ang John chapter 10 verse 10. You will live life of abundance. You will live a life of a joy para bigyan ka ng buhay na ganap at kasiya-siya. Kaya nga, kailangan mong trabahin, kailangan mong bait. Kailangan magkaroon ng platform yung abilities, potential sa giftings mo. Doon ang hanapin mo. Huwag mong hanapin yung isang bagay na hindi naman mag, 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 magpapalabas ng potensya na magstay dyan. Hanapin mo. Ano bang, ano bang hilig mo? Ano bang, ano ba? Kailan mo malalaman na giftings mo yan? Tingka sa akin. Kailan mo malalaman? No sweat yung pagginawa. Alimbawa, kumakanta ka. Yung isa kumanta, halos mapigtal ng ano, sentonado pa. Pero ikaw hawak ka, wala kang ugat. Kumanta ka. Tsaka passion mo siya. Na ano ka, kumbaga, easy lang sa'yo gawin. Tsaka passion mo, masaya kang ginagawa. Maybe that's your gift. You develop it. You find a platform. You find a venue where you can develop your giftings. Because the Lord will give all the provision to you. Malinaw. Malinaw. Ako, by the grace of God, ha, to the glory, for the glory of God, when I begin to preach the word, Ah, nandun lang ako sa tabi-tabi. Nung pero ako nag-connect kay Pastor Wilbert, sumama ako, kinultip. Sabi sa akin ni Pastor Wilbert, yung mga turo natin, i-develop ninyo, marami pa kayong may dagdag dyan. Outline lang yan. Totoo! na preach si Pastor ng pitong, pitong araw, na preach namin ng tatlong buwan. 
Ano nangyayari? There is a development going on. The Lord instructed man to meet his own needs. Remember this, ABG. There is no such thing as success by accident. Walang naging successful na aksidente lamang. Forget that. Fantasy ang tawag dyan. Okay? Kasi sa fantasy, makita nyo, nakakalipad ang tao. Then may mga fantasy movies, nakakalipad yung mga tao. It's a lie. There is no such thing as success by accident. You need to work out. You need to work for your success. And when you work, work hard and work smart. Malinaw? Because the giftings, the potentials, the abilities were already deposited by God inside you. All you need to do is to harness, to develop it, and to find a platform or to find a venue where you can unleash your potentials. And your pastor is the key to give you that platform. He can provide that platform for you. Number seven, God gave man instruction on how to preserve his life and position. Genesis 2, 16 to 17. In NIV, and the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. O, alam na natin ito. Mayroong kalikasan ng tao na makulit. Parang ikaw. O, ikaw nanonood. Mayroon tayong ganyan lahat. Sa dami-dami ng bunga sa halamanan, Yung pinagbabawal pang pinagdiskitahan, mayroon talagang ugaling ganyan ng bawat tao. Kaya kung kayo na ang papalit sa amin na maglit, huwag na kayo magtaka. Tinuruan mo na, nilinaw mo na, lahat-lahat na tinuro mo, sablay pa rin. Mayroon talagang ganyan. So, tandaan niyo ito, sabi ni Dr. Jonathan David, always do not violate instructions. Why? Because life is in instructions. Nagbigay ng instruction ng Diyos para ma-preserve ang kanilang buhay at kanilang posisyon. Pero anong ginawa? They violate instruction, they pay the price. All the blessings that God had intended for them well, or forfeited. Tingin ka sa akin. Do not violate instructions, especially the instructions of God's Word. Especially the instruction of your pastor. Do not violate. Why? Pag alam mo na yan ay tama at nag-violate ka, you will pay the price and you are the one forfeiting your blessing. Pangwalo, God saw his need of companionship and covenant. So, hindi ko na babasahin na, no? Mahaba ito, Genesis 2, 18 to 25. Yung makita ng Diyos si Adan, eh, talagang ano eh, uh, wala nang ano, kumbaga siya lang mag-isa, walang kasher, walang katulong, walang katuwang sa kanyang ginagaw. Pero mam, binigay sa kanya na Diyos ng trabaho, lahat ng hayo, pangalanan mo, kung itatawag mo sa kanya, siya na yung. Okay, so, Mahaba, marami. Sabi ng Lord, it's not good for man to be alone. So anong ginawa ng Panginoon? He saw his need of, God saw his need for companionship and covenant. So pinatulog si Adan, kinuha yung isang ribs. So, to make the long story short now, uh, he, he made it a woman and then bring her to the man. Okay, now, can you mabuti, no? Adam and Eve were, just, were not just partners as husband and wife. Ano sila? It was a marriage partnership towards destiny. Sa mga nagbabalak magpakasal, lagi niyong tandaan, mga babae, mga babae, makinig kayo ha, huwag kayong mag-asawa ng isang lalaki na walang destiny. Ulitin ko. Kasi ang role ninyo mga babae ay magiging katuwang, hindi katulong, katuwang. Helpmate. Sabi ni Dr. Jonathan David, pwede rin helpmate. When there is need, you will. You are the one who will going to meet the need. Now, makinig mabuti. Siguraduhin mo yung mapangasawa mo ay mayroong destiny para mayroong kang gagawin bilang helpmate. Kung ang napangasawa mo ay walang destiny, wilderness ang labas nyo. Kasi you cannot lead. Women, listen to me carefully. You are not designed to lead. You are designed to help. To help the man so that he will be able to reach his destiny. So if the man has no destiny, walang magagawang ang babae magiging, hindi siya magiging useful sa relationship na yun. Bakit? Kasi wala siyang susuportahan. Kaya mapapansin nyo, maraming miserabling mag-asawa, miserabling relationship. Why? Because walang destiny yung lalaki. Now, 
Makinig kayo mabuti. Mga lalaki naman, makinig, makinig kayo mabuti. Huwag kayong mag-asawa kung wala ka pang natanggap na God-given assignment or destiny for you. Kasi kawawa yung mapangasawa mo. Makinig ka, makawawa yung mapangasawa mo kasi wala ka naman pagdadalhan sa kanyang destinasyon. So, iikot-ikot lang ka sa wilderness. At pag nasa wilderness kayo, malakas dyan. Malakas makaburyong ang wilderness. Kaya dyan magsisimula ang gera. Now, makinig kayo mabuti. Ha? Lalaki, makinig ha? It was God who brought Eve to Adam. Huwag kayo ma-pressure sa edad. Because ang Diyos ang nagdala kay Eva papunta kay Adan. Hintayin nyo. Lalo na pag wala ka pang destiny, wala ka pang, walang pina, binibigay na assignment sa iyo ang Diyos, wag na wag kang, mag, wag na wag kang maghanap ng girlfriend or mapapangasawa. Because wala siyang magiging hindi siya pakinabang o hindi siya magiging contributor sa iyo. Nagkaunawan tayo. So babae, kung yung iyong mapapangasawa o boyfriend mo walang destiny, pag-isip-isip ka. Ipag-pray mo na magkaroon siya. Magiging hindi may lalabas ng babae yung potential niya. Tingnan niya ako mabuti. Men, if you have the destiny, then you go and you enter marriage. It will be a no ordinary marriage, but it will be a marriage partnership with to, with destiny. Ano mangyayari? Mararating nyo ang inyong destiny at mailabas nyo ang inyong mga puti. And give things. Ano mangyayari? You will enjoy a life that is meaningful, fruitful, and wonderful. But men, wait for the woman to come. Lagi mong tandaan, Adan ay nagpa-function na sa kanyang destiny. Pinapangalanan niya mga ayop. Talagang inayos niya ang garden at pinamahal niya. Tsaka ang Diyos nagpadala ng woman. Who created the woman? God. Who brought the woman to the man? God. So anong kailangan mong gawin? Gawin mo, ayusin mo relasyon mo sa Diyos, palalimin mo, at anong gagawin mo? Habang ikaw ay nagpakalalim, gawin mo ang pinapagawa sa ng Diyos, darating na lang ang katuwang mo na babae. At yung babae na yan, hindi yan problema, kundi yan ay magiging katuwang mo at yan ay pagpapala. Ang babaeng pinadala ng Diyos sa isang lalaki pagpapala. Pero pag ikaw ay walang destiny at ikaw ay kumuha at nag, nag, nag-asawa ka ng isang babae, ano mangyayari sa halip na pagpapala? Karambola ang abutin mo. And this is true. Kahit sa mga Kristiyan. Bakit? Ano lang nasa is- mag Magsama kami, magbuo kami ng pamilya, magkaanak kami. And that's a very shallow. That's a very shallow plan. Marriage should be partnership towards destiny. They have a common destiny to fulfill. They were destined to rule together. Nagkakaunawan? So sa bahay, dapat ang nanay at tatay nagro-rule. Isa lang. Pareha sila nagro-rule. Pero pagdating sa crucial decisions, the head of the woman is none other than the man. Ang lalaki ang magbibigay ng, ta- ng decision final. Pero Lalaki, kailangan i-consider mo, tanungin mo rin ang iyong asawang babae. Bakit? Ang mga asawang babae, mayroong, mayroong magkaibang uh, ability ang dalawa. Ang lalaki, strong ang personality at uh, ano lang siya, kumbaga, ma-focus more on results. Pero ang babae ay mayroong puso. Ang ibig sabihin, may, yung, yung compassion nandyan, yung kanyang, uh, ang tinatawag, yung care ay nandyan. So kailangan niyang pagsamahin ng maayos. But again, if the two of them has no common destiny, if both of them doesn't know their destiny, what? Sa halip na pagpapala, karambola ang mangyayari. Ano pa? In order for it to happen, they should work together. In order for them to reach destiny together, they should work together. At dapat alam ng bawat isa kung ano ang kanilang role. Adam, the leader, if the suitable helper. Marami pa sana tayong pag-uusapan. But kailangan natin tapusin dito. At ako po'y naniniwala kayong mga kabataan, darating kayo sa panahon 
na kayo ay maghahanap na ng inyong partner, maghahanap na ng inyong asawa, ulitin ko muli bago ako mag-end. Alam ng Diyos, bago ka pa'y panganak, alam na ng Diyos kung sino maging ka-partner mo. Pero hanggat hindi mo tinatrabaho at hindi ka nakapaporma sa Diyos at hindi ng Diyos mailagay ang mga mabubuting layunin, lalong-lalo na ang iyong destiny, ang iyong assignment, the woman will not come. That is why, pag hindi dumating, anong sinabi ng iba? Pag hindi mo nakita, hanapin mo. That's the, a trap from the... Kaya maraming ganyan, naghahanapan ng magkakitaan, walang destiny, yari. Malinaw? So, laging tandaan, kaya natin purmahin tayo ng Diyos. At pag napurma na tayo ng Diyos, paano gagamitin niya? Anong kanyang tool? Sharp and strong messages that will build our spirit. And then, always remember that God, life is in God and God is life. And if we have God, then we have life. Pangatlo, in Him we live, in Him we move. In Him we have our being. This is the reason of our existence. Pangapat, once you are formed by God, God will be the one. God was the one, is the one preparing your destiny. And God will be the one to take you the once. You are formed by God. And then, God will give you instructions. Nagkaw naman tayo? God will give you instructions. Tama? Yung ba nakalagay? God place him in the garden and God will give you, God will release all the provision in the right place. Napagadalhan sa'yo ng Diyos, kapatid. Abot kamay ang biyaya at lahat ng pangailangan mo naroon. Pag-anim, ibigyan ka niya ng instruction pa paano mamit, mamit ang iyong need. Mali ang Diyos sa paglikha sa iyo. Nariyan na ang potentials, nariyan na ang giftings, nariyan na rin ang abilities. Kailangan lang ma-harness, kailangan ma-develop. At lagi mong tandaan, you're created unique. You can do something that others cannot. And your pastor can help you prepare a venue and a platform for you. Pampito. He, he will give us instruction to preserve our lives and position. Always remember, life is in instructions. Do not violate instructions and you will preserve life. The moment you violate instruction, then you are inviting death. You are inviting destruction to come to you. Then pangwalo, God saw its need of companionship and covenant. Stop a Rambo type believer. Huwag ka mag-isa. Ang Rambo yata, mayroon niya, apat yata na ano, no? Apat na part. Palaging ganun ang nangyayari. Bago matatapos ang pelikula, bugbog sarado siya. Nanalo nga, puro sugatan. Kasi Stallone, naka, natuto na. Sabi niya, hindi na pwedeng Rambo. Expendables na tayo. Ano nangyari? Kumuha siya ng mga magaling na kasama o de-relax siya. Kapatid, you cannot be alone. You need a pastor. You need a mentor. You need a father, spiritual father, to lead you and guide you. As long na walang nagpa, nag, nagpa-father sa'yo, walang nagme-mentor, walang nagpa-pastor sa'yo, it will be hard for you to reach destiny. In the year of governing and prevailing, It is, be, it is very important to immerse and establish ourselves in the Word and allow God to form us. And let us respect and honor the man or the pastor that God has placed over us because he or she serves as our spiritual covering. As long as we're under his spiritual covering, we are totally, completely, and undisputedly safe. I love you, ABG. Pagpalain kayo ng Panginoon. The hard and strong teachings, I pray that these hard and strong teachings will build your spirit and make you a vessel of honor. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for reminding us that we need your word. It is not optional. It is compulsory. It is needed. And this year, 2021, is the best year to start. Strong! We believe that your word brings strength and that your word will make us strong. And if we start strong, we will finish strong. We pray, Father God, sa mga kabataan na nakikinig ngayon at mga kapatiran na magkaroon kami ng uhaw, gutom sa iyong mga salita. At habang kami, O Diyos, ay nag-aaral, nag-meditate ng iyong mga salita, Holy Spirit, I pray, 
for your divine intervention that you will speak to us in a very powerful way that the word will no longer just a written word but it will become a living word so that it will minister over our lives and as we continue to immerse our lives and establish our lives in your word first john 4:17 will be fulfilled in this world we are like jesus victorious powerful and defeated the enemy i pray lift up your hands i pray in the name of jesus as you continue to immerse your word yourself in the word of god as you continue to allow the sharp messages strong messages of god to form your life that the lord will empower us strengthen us to duplicate what the lord jesus christ had fulfilled against the enemy i declare in jesus name that you are unbeatable immovable powerful blessed and victorious believers this is my prayer for you and i pray that the lord will continue to bless you your table will never run out of food your blessings will continue to increase because this is the year of prevailing and governing this is my prayer in the powerful name of our lord and savior jesus christ the blessed people of god declare amen and amen